I recently worked with Honeypot to tell my personal journey. If you don't know Honeypot, it's a tech job platform in the DAC region, the Netherlands and Barcelona. But you may know Honeypot from the Kubernetes and Prometheus documentaries they put out on their YouTube channel. In this video, I talk about my personal journey into software engineering and then DevOps. I also talk about university education versus being self-taught, as well as give some advice to people who are just starting out in the software development and many more interesting topics. I hope you guys enjoy it and find it useful. I'm Nana Janashia and I'm a, a DevOps engineer and currently I actually what I do is full-time um, create content for other DevOps engineers or people who are interested in becoming DevOps engineers to learn about lots of different technologies in the field as well as consult and help companies to build the uh, DevOps uh, processes in their, um, in their organizations. The reason why I became an uh, engineer in the first place and why, uh, how I actually ended up in IT field is um, a pretty random one actually, it was by coincidence because I had no idea of IT field and how or what kind of um, uh, tasks or what kind of thing it was, I was getting myself into. I actually had a marketing background um, and when I um, decided I, I want to stay in Austria, I actually uh, started looking for a profession that would be much more demanded than marketing professionals were. And IT actually sit, popped out right away uh, from just the job demands and the job descriptions and amount of, of uh, job demand for this uh, profession. So I kind of, that was like my first point of interest. Like, okay, what is this IT? And of course I had this thing in my, in my mind, which was, um, I mean, I don't know any women actually in this field that, I don't even know any friends of mine in this field. So, and I had this thing that this is for like, for men. But immediately, I think after starting uh, the studies in IT, uh, after two months or so, I realized programming is super fun. It's super interesting. Uh, it's, it's difficult and it's challenging as I expected, uh, but it's not something that you can't do. Like it, it, it's not impossible, right? You have to learn it just as you learn any other profession. So I realized it's not that, difficult compared to, to other stuff and that was actually the, the um, time when I decided okay this is highly demanded but I also enjoyed doing it. And then from then on I got an internship from the second semester um, and then I realized I, I was learning a lot at job at the internship by doing the things uh, in practice than just learning things at the college or university just theoretically. So I focused on that actually more. So the, the most, the biggest disadvantage of college and university is they can't really keep up with the technological developments. So their curriculum is 100% gonna be outdated because that's just how it is. Um, and second, it just takes much more time because you learn a lot of kind of unneeded, unnecessary, theoretical stuff that you may never actually use uh, at work, right? And it takes a lot of time away from you that you could actually be investing in learning programming, for example, in Java instead of learning mathematics. And that was actually also a reason why I personally, uh, so I quit my studies in the third, beginning of third semester um, because I realized, okay, I'm learning much more from these online resources and combined with work experience. So I just realized I don't need actually this formal education. So that's what I would recommend others as well. But another challenge is also when you're learning uh, yourself, um, it can be challenging because one, you need self-discipline and second, you may not actually know what to learn, right? So you need some, some way or some resource that tells you, okay, learn this first, to this level and this and combine this way. So it could be hard for, for a lot of people to find or put together these resources themselves. So 
even if um, software development and DevOps engineering is super fun and I actually love it, um, it, I have to I have to give a warning as well because it comes with a lot of challenges especially when you're beginning and starting off and I had this personally myself you may feel you will definitely feel like super overwhelmed especially when you're in the team and they're like senior engineers and they're like super experienced you feel like a newbie you feel like you don't know anything and you feel like you can't you are not learning fast enough so the way um, that it affected me, for example, in, in one of the projects that I can mention as an example, where I actually learned or, and took over the Kubernetes, full-time Kubernetes management, was uh, that we were a team um, of a couple of software developers and we had super experienced, like expert level developers in the team. And I actually felt, even though I was also one of the lead developers, I actually felt like pretty um, inexperienced myself because I had less experience, I had less knowledge and it was like a whole new world, like a, a next level project like with the difficulty. So I felt like, okay, there is another project where I feel like, I don't know, a lot of things. I had this imposter sy syndrome again. So I used that actually as um, a motivation for me to take on tasks that I would be like probably the only one in the team that would like learn and master um, those skills. So in a way that, in a way, I could say that I turned my imposter syndrome uh, into uh, into this advantage uh, and motivation of actually learning stuff that were super valuable that I uh, build the uh, most knowledge in. After that, I found out about DevOps, which is basically to explain in like very simple terms. Uh, DevOps is um, the basically making the work of developers and operations um, automated, more efficient, seamless, right? And since we have like a separate role as a DevOps engineer, basically what, you, what the, the main responsibility is to take what developers have created and seamlessly in a most automated, efficient, fast, secure, whatever way, um, basically release it to the end users, right? So the whole process of taking that coded application, putting it on the end environment and making it accessible to the end users in a secure way, in a, you know, a highly uh, performant, available way. That's the, the main responsibility of DevOps. And then I, once I found out about that, I already knew, okay, all these technologies that are part of DevOps are already familiar for me. And then I just did, decided to go full time in that field and learn all the other rest of the technologies basically um, in that field. If you want to get into DevOps, you can use the software development entry as like a um, first point. And then even as a junior uh, software developer, you can start um, transitioning into DevOps because you would have enough foundation knowledge as a prerequisite to start learning the things that you need in DevOps. DevOps is still relatively, like compared to, to other IT fields, I would say relatively young. Um, and there is a lot of things going on there, like a lot of dynamics. And I, you could see like a lot of di different technologies that are uh, being developed and invented for different use cases or like problems that you have in the DevOps projects. Um, and you also have like a lot of um, similar, like very, very similar technologies developed in, in the same area, which is actually a sign um, for the fact that there is no like one standardized solution for that. So I believe that um, the trend, the market trend um, and the way that uh, and the direction where DevOps is going to be uh, developing into will be to standardize the processes more, to have like a few set of tools that most of the projects like 90% or maybe even more um, projects will use. Um, and all the rest of the technologies will just disappear because like there has to be one winner in each category. So I think that's going to be the trend uh, versus now where you have like 10 different tools to choose from which are super similar for the same task. And then you have this thing because none of them is super standardized and the one that's mostly used. So you kind of have to choose between them and evaluate them all the time. Um, but I think it's going to standardize a lot more. And generally the DevOps, because it's becoming mainstream already and we see that, um, the DevOps itself is going to be uh, become more clearly defined and there will be like more clarity from the companies, what they expect from a DevOps engineer, where's the line between 
uh, developer and DevOps engineer? Where's the line between operations and uh, DevOps? I think that's gonna be um, in like maybe four or five years, we're gonna see that kind of um, standardization. Thousands of developers find jobs across Europe using Honeypot. If you're up for a new challenge in one of these European cities, sign up at honeypot.io. If you want to see more tech documentaries, then subscribe so you don't miss the next one.